Good morning. Um, wow, this was fast getting to you, Deborah, and I really appreciate all that you do and how cheerful you are. Thank you. I just turned 70, and for my birthday, I asked my departed son, what should I do new? And I ended up with a new dog. And I really feel for the woman who, who just spoke earlier, because my dog, this dog from a rescue is an escape artist. So she's going to have to have lots of careful watching. And I thought, I wanted a dog that was 20 pounds max, didn't shed, and was at least five years old. And I didn't get any of that. So, but this one was born on my birthday. So it felt like it's meant to be, and I'm not sure why. But because of becoming, to coming into the spirituality as a result of my son's death, not that I didn't know anything. I was interviewed. I inter I mean, I was on an interview call with Betty Eady years ago, and I read Dr. Newton's books and I read Raymond Moody's books. So I've always been open minded. It just wasn't a life practice. So now that I understand meditation and binaural beats and connecting with guides, and I've had lots of signs, and I don't have that much time left being 70, it's not like I'm 30. I, I want to know what my purpose was, or, or what lesson I mainly came here to learn, whether because I wanted to or needed to, because I'd like to know if I'm doing it. Well, Creator says the prime directive is to come here in this third dimensional body, expand your consciousness, find what feeds your soul and do it, and have a really good time. That's it. The rest comes from you. So you come here with this plan of what you want to accomplish. You're going to resolve some old karma. You're going to reconnect with some people. And you're also going to, as you expand your consciousness, you're going to lean more into your understanding of you as a soul so that you can more freely express yourself. That's the crux of it. Okay. So let me just ask if they want to add anything to give you more clarity on that. So for Denise, what can you help her with as far as her future? Well, the first thing is they're saying, you know, 70, you're just beginning. <laughs> so let go of that a limiting belief that, you know, you're, you're past your prime. No. In fact, because of this shift into fourth dimensional bodies and the earth, which we're undergoing right now, that's probably what you're feeling a lot of too. Because our mm -hmm. DNA is being rewritten, you know, that's something for us to go through. So because of all that, you are likely going to live longer than you would have otherwise. We're all going to be living longer. So let's let go oh. of all those notions about expiration dates. You live every day and you don't worry about the rest. You just, you're here, you, you live to the fullest extent. You're looking for joy, for love, and you're sharing that with the world. There's no higher purpose than that bringing love and light to the world and to yourself. Of course, to yourself first, right? And then you share it. So here we are as light workers. whether you came to the party later or earlier, you're here at the right time for you. Just as this dog, even though it's not what you thought you wanted, it's what you needed. The angels work all that out. You will see over time when you look back why this dog was the right one for you. You needed each other and it's perfect. So you're going to move forward with that, looking for those things that bring you joy. What feeds your soul? What feeds your soul? Those are your clues. From that, then you make choices about what do I want to do each day? But it's always what feeds your soul first? What brings you joy? Don't forget the joy. That's It's like these three ingredients in the pot. Higher consciousness, what feeds your soul, and joy. You keep those three things in your stew pot. And you keep working on them in pretty much equal measure. And you will be cooking with gas. It'll be perfect. And that really, I mean, how simple is that? We come here thinking that there's some greater thing that we have to accomplish. But if you do those three things, you will accomplish the greater thing. It evolves from it. Some of it you don't know yet because you haven't gotten there. You're on the path. You're not at the destination because that's death. It's all about the journey. So you have that joy along the journey. You do what feeds your soul. And how do we get better than that? Does that make sense? Yes. I have, I know I can hear this again later, but joy is the one I probably neglect. 
especially at this time of my life, because I feel like I can only accomplish one task a day and I take a lot of breaks, you know, because I'm always reading or, or listening to a podcast or, but many times I've read that we, we have, a, we, we come here because in a, pro, in a previous life, maybe we were selfish or we were not empathetic or, and so we make that personal, um, I, that's not a human trait. That's that's a consciousness trait, correct? Well, yeah, we all Those have are, a lot of things that we're working to to get right. better at. But if you so, focus on the love, the joy, the consciousness, you don't worry about those other things. They will fall into place. Okay, so I don't need to worry that maybe I had a particular reason. Well, one reason for growth, and another, say, for joy. And another for consciousness. It yeah. just the rest it, will just work its way out because you arranged in your pre-birth plan for what you wanted to do. You've got milestones, even though if you're not conscious of them, your soul is still working on those things. As you lean more into consciousness, you will probably connect more with your soul and get that. I would recommend for you get the 21 day meditation book. It's it's called The Path to Hearing Angels and Guides. If you don't already have it, read that book. Start connecting with your angels, having conversations with them. Then you will feel that connection. You will feel more on your path, more confidence and more joy. Because when you start talking to angels, how does it get better than that? It's just exciting. It's delightful. It's wonderful. So in that book, there's a link to join the support group on Facebook. If you do that, it will accelerate your progress tremendously. Because you will see how other people did it what the stumbling blocks were so that you don't have to have them, you get there faster. And Deborah, I belong to Helping Parents Heal. There's so much sadness, so much grief there, and a lot of support. But I'm very encouraged by what you said earlier today, that no soul leaves until they're ready. Exactly. And I didn't... I. I kind of, be, I believe that in a, in a different way now, because I wasn't sure why my son died, but I believe he was ready. And it wasn't because of illness or anything. It was his plan is, um, and I had read that before somewhere. Is that, is that okay to say to other parents who are grieving so much harder than I am? Well, yeah, absolutely. They should know this because it will help them. The thing is, you want to do it in a delicate way. Sure. Oh, you know, I know that. Voiced beliefs on them. But right. You find a kind and gentle way to just clue them in. Listen, the soul leaves the body when it's ready. And when it's ready, there's nothing's going to stop it. The only question is how it exits. It could be illness. It could be accident. Right. Whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just whatever's convenient to get that soul out of that body at that time something law of attraction will bring something they will manifest it whether they're conscious of that or not right so if we know that if we know that they were ready to go they've completed their journey in that body can't we be happy for them instead yes. of waiting for them plus once we learn how to communicate with the angels we can also communicate with the departed it's as easy to do that as, as it is the angels and go to my website akashaunleashed.com, get the meditation connecting with guides. And when you do that, connect with the loved one. You can call guides and angels too, but connect with the loved one too. When you do that, it's as real as if they're here in the third dimension with you. They're just in the fifth dimension with you. You can hold them. You can talk to them. You can ask them questions. You can just be with them. It's so- I don't want to be time greedy, but you just said something else that clued me in. What happened to the fourth dimension? We are moving physically into the fourth dimension. Consciously, we're moving from fifth dimension to sixth dimension. There's a little bit of... Already? Fifth to sixth? Consciousness. The People think that we're going, the earth is going to fifth dimension. That's from what I've been told. No, the earth is going to fourth dimension. We're not going from third to fifth. Fifth is the Akashic Records. We're not all graduating to the Akashic Records. We're in bodies. So okay. we're going to be fourth dimension on earth. Consciousness wise, we are already fifth dimension. Once you know you're a soul, that's fifth dimensional consciousness. Okay. We are now moving up the scale to sixth dimensional consciousness, which will go with our fourth dimensional bodies. Okay. Thank you. 
You're welcome. <laughs> that is that clarifies it so well. I've read different things. One said it the fourth dimension isn't ours, it's the angels' realm. No, angels are in higher realms. That's yeah, okay. Thank you, Deborah. But don't let don't let the technicalities of the words throw you. It's the concept. Right. That's it's the concept. Yes. Yeah. That's just semantics. Okay. Thank you so much. You're Have welcome. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. You too. Thank you.